Hello everyone. Welcome to Electric Power Syrup channel. In one of the previous videos, I covered about how to perform DC load flow analysis. And one of the viewer, he asked a question where he says that sometimes in a large network, when he runs the DC load flow, he doesn't get exactly the same generation and demand. Uh, and there is always small difference and the larger the network, the difference is bigger between the generation and demand. So I wanted to take, uh, create this video to address that question and share an important insight around the DC load flow with respect to different software tools. First and foremost, the DC load flow is uh, what it does is give you the bus angles for the given generation and demand profile. Now, if your generation and demand is not matching, one of the possible reason is could be is the line losses. There are some uh, software tools which does model your uh, transmission line losses even in the DC power flow. In such cases, if you try to match the total generation with your actual total demand, there will be a mismatch because your now your actual demand is your load plus losses. So I'm going to show this through an example. Let me switch over to PS PSSE. I have loaded the same uh, three bus case as we used in that episode. So let me go ahead and perform the DC load flow. So go to power flow, linear network, DC load flow, and then I will ignore this include loss for now. I'll show you the difference between the two results. So now if I click go and close this and switch to the DC load flow solution, there are two different formats. It generates the DC load flow solution. I'll just use the first one. Now if you see here, you can see that generation is 300 plus 200, so 500 megawatts, and we have a load of 500 megawatts. So it's matching. Also, if you see the different line flows, for example, bus 1 to 2, it's 60. So we expect that bus 2 to 1 is minus 60. So the flow from uh, 1, like in either direction, should be of equal magnitude, just the different sign because there are no losses. So it, from both end, it should see the same number. Now let's perform the same load flow analysis. And now let's select this option where I say that include loss estimates. I click here, click go close and switch to this here now you can see that the generation is 308.4 plus 200 so 508.4 megawatts whereas the load is still only 500 so that's the difference uh, which i think the user was talking about and similarly in the flows so you can see that Bus 1 to 2 is 63.6, whereas bus 2 to 1 is minus 62.8. And that's because that, if you add these two numbers, will give you the line losses which was modeled, even though we are formulating DC load flow. And this is done uh, for different reasons and uh, perhaps use cases to. Uh, make this solution more closer to the full AC power flow. 
and i'll show you where this um like what this line estimate or line losses modeling does in the pssc documentation itself so i'll go help pssc documentation uh, program operation manual it's in chapter 9 li uh, linear network analysis and uh, fourth 9.4 section and the application notes i'll go here and zoom a little hopefully this is visible yeah so here you can see that in general the mathematics of the standard dc it ig ignores line losses and therefore when you do the load flow the solution you get will be such that the generation and load are exactly balanced however in this pssc dc load flow when you select that option where you are saying to model the line losses so what it does is it takes the initial voltage uh, solution that you have currently calculate the losses on the branch and then model it as a load on one uh, the sending end of the branch so one of the buses it models that losses as an additional load and that's why when you select this option the generation and demand do not match and that excess generation which you see are basically your total system losses on further investigation of mine, I also found that uh, if you are using an uh, older version of PSSC, which is version 33, there the default is that the line losses are modeled and there is no option to ignore. This option to ignore line losses in the DC load flow was added from version 34. And so similarly, it's important when you are trying to perform load flow, uh, perhaps using some other commercial tools or any other software which does this to understand what are their modeling, um, or what are their mod, uh, mathematical models they are using to generate the results. That is the important insight i wanted to share through this video regarding dc power flow i hope this addresses the question which user asked and clarify for anyone else seeing such similar differences in the results when they are performing dc load flow with that um, i would uh, thank you for watching this video please do like uh, subscribe and share and stay tuned for more videos and updates. Thank you.